Hello friends and fans of EVGA and today we're going to give you a quick guide on installing a GPU in your system. Now this is a question that we get pretty often in customer service, you know, this is my first build or this is my first high-end graphics card and maybe it's something that you haven't done very much. Um, so we're going to give you some useful tips um, but we're going to go full EVGA on it which is why it's going into an X299 Dark on a Praxis Bench and we have an RTX 280 graphics card, this being a triple slot card uh, that we're installing in this system. So uh, while this may not be totally applicable to the system that you're building, uh, certainly the tips and tricks um, in the general process is going to be basically the same. So it's not too difficult. We're going to start with the card itself. Um, this card, like many of our cards, uh, will require external power. Um, basically PCI Express power to augment the power that comes in through your PCI Express slot. Um, that being said, some cards will run entirely on slot power. If you look at the connector for your uh, graphics card, uh, all cards are going to have these data lanes here. In this case, it's a 16x data lane, and then it's going to have the power pins. These power pins are consistent on all PCI Express devices, um, so you want to make sure that this is fully seated, because if uh, this happens to not be fully in the slot. You can actually do some pretty serious damage to both your graphics card and your motherboard That's probably the only thing that you can do when installing a graphics card that could cause damage to the system um, So you do want to make sure that those power pins are fully seated, um, but we'll show you that when we actually install a card uh, again um, When you're installing it you want to line up your slot obviously, but you also need to line up their brackets uh, these PCIe brackets have little fingers on them. Those will slot into the back of your case, or in our case, into, into the back of this bench. Um, and that will ensure that the card is uh, straight, and it also will keep the card from sagging. Not a big issue on this system, but in most systems, it's going to be mounted like this. Um, so you want to make sure that it's not getting pulled too far, and this helps resist that. Um, again, power connectors on the top, and that's basically all you need to know on the card side. Uh, on the motherboard side, um, you're probably going to have multiple PCI Express slots. Most um, systems will, or most motherboards will. Um, basically, all of them will have a clasping mechanism. So this is locked. This is unlocked. When you're putting in your graphics card, you want it to be unlocked. And then when you push it into the slot, it will lock itself. Um, there are different kind of clasps that you may have on different motherboards. If you're not sure, um, just look at your motherboard manual. They'll always tell you uh, how to do that correctly. Um, for most motherboards, the primary slot is your topmost slot or your topmost 16x slot. It is on this X299 Dark. Though, if for some reason you're not able to use that slot, most motherboards will allow you to use a different slot uh, and still get your full 16x lanes. Um, but we're going to use the main slot on this one. First thing we want to do, your PCIe bracket is going to be held in with screws. Sometimes it's toolless, but this one does have some screws on top. So we need to pull off three of these because this is a triple slot card. And now you just want to get it lined up with the slot and the back. So I can see it's going in. There we go. And once I seated it fully, there was a click. And that audible click told me that the card uh, is pushed all the way down in the slot. Again, uh, it's good to kind of get down low and visually check to make sure that the slot is fully in there, especially the power pins on the back part of your PCI Express slot. Um, but the card is fully down in there. Uh, to hold it in place, we're going to use those three screws. Um, your card, if it's a double slot or a single slot, may only need two or one. This card, we're going to use all three. Um, you can screw this in with a screwdriver, but these are thumb screws and finger tight for this is okay. Um, this is not going to make a big difference on this particular bench. On your system, to avoid sag, you may want to use a little bit of pressure with a screwdriver to keep it in place. Okay. There's a huge temptation for people at this point to try to power on their system. Um, remember, you do still have these power connectors on this card. You want to connect those up. Uh, we have an 8-pin PCIe power, uh, power connector and a 6-pin. 8-pins uh, 
are basically equivalent to two six pins. This is rated for about 150 watts, whereas the six pin is rated for 75. So that gives you a general idea about how much the entire card can consume uh, when you consider that the slot itself can also supply 75 watts. So we're gonna connect this up here. Um, your connectors are probably going to be split like this where you've got a six and then a two. If you kind of push them together and there's usually a little lip, you get an eight. So that is your eight pin connector. And that's what we're going to use. Uh, like the PCI Express slot itself, whoops, I did that wrong. You want to make sure that the six pin is holding that two pin in place. And sometimes it slips out. Uh, like the PCI Express slot, you should get a bit of a click uh, when the connector goes in to tell you that it's fully seated. Sometimes it doesn't quite click, but you should be able to see that it's fully connected, fully seated. Do, do, do. Let's get this second one in. I believe we actually had it reversed when we last did this, so I'm making it a little bit more difficult on myself. Alright, I'm just going to tuck that little unused two pin between the two and there we go so power is connected to this card um, it's in the slot uh, you can turn on your system at this point it's not going to cause any issues um, but your system may not post successfully the reason being is that the system often will need to be connected to a monitor to actually recognize your card so if you get an error like a d6 error as an example d6 essentially means it's not seeing a graphics card and that probably because you don't have a monitor connected um, but this is the basic process for installing a pci express graphics card like an rtx or a gtx in a motherboard and uh, if you have any suggestions on future how-to videos please leave those in the comment section comment section below i always struggle with that uh, but at any rate we hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one Comment section. Comment. The Haley's, Haley's comment section. Exactly. <laughs>